We have Zara Erdahl here, and Zara is from Marshfield High School. And Zara got to work uh, at South Slough this summer. I got the opportunity to work with her. We learned about a plant called eelgrass. So Zara, you want to tell us a little bit about what you've got here? Okay, well, this is the native eelgrass, Zoster marina. And this is the non-native eelgrass, Zoster japonica. The, non, or the native eelgrass, Zoster marina, grows within the intertidal channels of the South Slough and it has a rep reproductive branch which we don't have a sample of here but it has seeds that it disperses and that's how they grow. The difference is that these have much wider leaves and they're longer than the Zoster japonica. The Zoster japonica was imported from Japan through packaging of the oysters for here to help our economy. Okay. And uh, now this eelgrass, the Sostra japonica, is something that we're experimenting out at South Slough with maybe trying to remove, right? Yes, we're trying we to... do a little bit of work yeah. on that? We have a shading experiment right now. Very good. And uh, Zara's going to come back out to South Slough and have an opportunity to check on that, and I hope to go with her, so mm -hmm. we'll do that. Okay. Back over this way is uh, Dr. Steve Rumrill. Hi, Steve. How are you? How are you doing, Tom? I am doing very well, thanks. Steve uh, Romrell, our research coordinator at South Slough. Steve, what do you have there? Hey, well, I'm going to talk with you about eelgrass. You've seen that this is a really important terrestrial plant that is invaded and, and lives in these soft sediment estuaries. But as uh, scientists, we're really concerned about where the eelgrass is growing and how dense it is and how healthy it is as an indicator in the estuary. So those of us who are concerned about those things rely on habitat maps, Sometimes the maps are taken by uh, aerial photography from airplanes, can also be taken by satellites, but we can also do these measurements ourselves down here in the field. So I'm gonna just show you a couple different uh, techniques for measuring the eelgrass beds in the field. So follow me on out here. The tide has just changed. Okay. You can see the eelgrass beds down here in the water. And one of the techniques that we'll use when the water is deep like this is a photo quadrat. So the photo quadrat will just drop down through the water, slowly place it down there, and then it has a camera up on the top. So I can just take a photograph like that, and then bring that camera back into the lab and analyze the photograph in the, in the laboratory. You can also use just conventional tools like a meter stick, like this, to measure the depth of the water and also to measure the length of the eelgrass blades themselves. So those are good metrics to figure out how healthy a, a, a grass bed is. From these photographs or work that we've uh, done out here in the field, we can measure the numbers of blades per square meter, and we can also estimate the spatial cover in terms of uh, percent cover of eelgrass beds. I also want to just talk about a little bit the importance of epiphytes and light. The amount of light that gets through the water is really important in terms of, of uh, allowing the plants to grow and there's a lot of small epiphytic small plants that grow on top of it that determine how much light can get through. But then we can also use a couple of instruments that we have hanging off the dock here. A secchi disc to measure how much light gets through the water and then also some electronic meters like a LICOR meter to actually measure the amount of light, the photons that actually hit the blades of grass. Very so I'll good. just leave it there. All right. Very good. We have a couple of divers that are in the water here. And you're going to be uh, watching here. What are you going to be looking at underwater? Crabs, salmon, anything we can find. Hopefully maybe some clam necks. Great. And we're going to lower down a uh, video camera to you. And go ahead and start. We're going to explore that eelgrass bed. Now, of course, the eelgrass is, is pretty far underwater right now. And uh, students up here are watching on the monitor, and our home viewers are going to get a chance to see what the eelgrass looks like underwater. Very good. All right, what are we seeing over here on the monitor? My gosh, the, the camera has gone down. And oh, wait a minute, I'm seeing the bottom and blades of eelgrass. Maybe a little crab. All right. And now it's moving through. There's some eelgrass. 
There's, oh, a dungeon-ass crab. Look at that, you guys. So these dungeon-ass crabs seem to like that. We had a question, does eelgrass have an effect on habitat of crab and salmon? I would say there's living proof right there, huh? So we found dungeon-ass crab working around in the eelgrass meadow. And the young, we saw some of the young on the blades of the, the grass. All right. Our divers are still down, so we'll have to say thank you to them when they come back up. We're going to get up close with an eelgrass bed, and we're going to see some of the different animals that uh, Steve started to talk about, those epiphytic plants and animals that live on the blades of the eelgrass. And uh, eelgrass really kind of weaves together the estuary. So you saw, heard from uh, Nancy McDonald there. Uh, she weaves it into her baskets, but nature weaves it into the ecology of the estuary. Hi, Allie, how are you? Fine. This is Allie Helms, and Allie is uh, a member of our research staff here with our monitoring program. Yeah. Hello. And what do you have for us today, Allie? Yes, eelgrass provides a variety of habitats for organisms. Some of the organisms live on the eelgrass blades. Others live actually within the blades, not necessarily on the surface. And other organisms actually live within the roots. So first I'm going to show you some organisms that live on the blades. Do you guys know what these animals are in these dishes? They're sea slugs. That's right. And what kind of sea slug is this? They're the carnivores. Exactly. And what does a carnivore eat? Um, well, they eat tiny little animals that cross its path. Exactly. So these sea slugs eat other animals that are related to jellyfish. Now these sea slugs are different, and you can see that they're green. What do you think they might eat? They would probably eat vegetables. Yep, they're herbivores, so they eat other plants. And they eat plants that are living on the eelgrass blades. Now here's another organism that lives on the eelgrass blades. Do you guys remember what these are? Um, they are isopods. That's right. And isopods have little legs and they cling to the eelgrass blade and they also look very much like eelgrass. What do you call that when they blend into the environment? Camouflaged. Exactly. Okay, so let's move on. These are animals don't necessarily live right on the surface of the blades, but they live within the dense growth that the eelgrass beds provide. And what are these guys? Um, they are pipefish and they're almost related to um, the seahorses and they're they're a shape like an eel, but they, um, as you can see, they could blend in well with the eelgrass. And the way they eat is that they could, um, they have their mouths are like vacuums. They suck up any food that comes near them. They're also carnivores That's as well. That's right. Ellie, I'm, I'm just going to jump in here because we've got a couple of classes that have some questions for you. Do any organisms eat live eelgrass? Yes, the isopods right here eat eelgrass, Very and good. they're perfect for doing that. They live right on the eelgrass, so. All right, we've got another creature here to yeah, show so us. Yeah, so there's also organisms that live among the roots of the eelgrass, and this is a moon snail. What is the most obvious thing about the moon snail to you guys? Shell. Yeah, it, the shell's kind of small, and what's all this? It's the foot that it can extract from its body that's and right. pull into its shell. Yep, and it has quite a large foot, and that's probably for burrowing. So it burrows underneath the sediment at the roots of the eelgrass, and it finds things to eat, like these clams or cockles. So this is kind of the big foot of uh, eelgrass meadows. <laughs> yeah, and it actually makes this characteristic hole that's in the clam. How do you think it does that? It probably would do it to eat. Exactly. It no. Exactly. It sucks out the clam material. Digestive acids? Is that how it gets the stuff through? Yep, it has enzymes. Thank you very much.